All right, everybody, welcome back. More right tackle stuff today. And we're not done with the cream of the crop at all. We are still looking at some primo right tackle talent. These are guys who should easily go in the first round. These are guys who I think clearly deserve to go in the first round. Um, that's why I said what I said earlier. It's kind of too bad we have such a head scratcher at right tackle right now. It'd be nice to know for a fact that Lucas is either going to be good for us for the next decade or he's done and we need to go get somebody else because this is a great draft to get that somebody else. Case in point, Amarius Mims, who might end up being the best of all of them if he can just stay on the football field. Georgia Bulldog, 21 years old when the season starts. This guy is the true titan of this class. 6'8", 340 pounds, 36 and an eighth inch arms, 11 and a quarter inch hands. That's bigger than Latham. That's significantly bigger than Fuaga. That's a monstrous human being. They don't make him like this all the time. And that would be enough, but look at the testing. He ran his 40 in 507 seconds. That's insane. That's inhuman. Like, like this guy has to be mechanical or something. This guy's got to be a cyborg. 10-yard split is great, is, well, not great, but for his size, it's phenomenal. The vert was low, but the broad jump was really good. He's got explosiveness down there, too. It's not just size. Every big board has him in the first round, except for the draft network. They have him just outside it. Aggregate has him in the late middle first, which um, I could see that. And the main reason why I can see that is because he just can't stay on the field. In fact, I think he's got single-digit starts in his collegiate career. <coughs> like, you look at his stats over the last two years. Um, they're good, of course. The PFF grades are solid. The pass protection numbers are almost completely clean. But he's played a grand total of 680 snaps, approximately. He's just not played that much. So you're drafting him based off traits, athleticism, size. You're not drafting him because he's actually gone out there and done it over an extended period of time. He hasn't. He's played a relatively small amount of football over the last couple of years. And th there isn't something like you can go back to like, oh, in 2020, he was amazing. It, it, he's got like, I think, eight or nine starts in his collegiate career. So it's thin. But... I mean, the, the size alone is a selling point. He's comically massive, and it doesn't kill his leverage game. He knows how to get low enough to win the leverage battles, even though he's 6'8", which, I mean, props to him. That's not easy. It's not easy to be the low man when you're 6'8". He uses his hands really well. He's got good hand placement, understands hand placement stuff pretty well. His punches are powerful. He shows some potential as a move blocker. I mean, you see the testing numbers. He looks like a guy who can probably play on the move at least a little bit. He's agile enough to recover when he gets beat. Not that he gets beat that often, but he's able to keep up laterally. He can shuffle his feet to stay in front of a guy even when he's getting the edge on him. He might be able to make it at left tackle as well, which is the most important offensive line position. So you might be getting a quality left tackle as well if you get a guy like Mims. He's got a very strong punch. So there are issues that come with a guy with this little experience. I think chief among them the fact that he just doesn't have a lot of experience. His latch in the run game isn't strong. Like he'll win the rep. He'll be in a good spot. He'll be doing his job. But he doesn't have the grip that you would like to keep control of his man until the whistle blows. Sometimes he gets the win, and then the guy gets away from him. There will have to be some added consistency in hitting moving targets. Like, he does have potential in a zone scheme as a move blocker, but he whiffs on some open field targets. Like, you send him to block a linebacker. He's just a little out of control. Sometimes you can catch him leaning and lunging. So there, there are some technique issues with his blocking that are going to hold him back a little bit for now. But, I mean... That's all stuff that should be fixed with coaching, right? He's a little bit of a work in progress, but he's probably got the most potential of any right tackle in this draft. And like, I'm looking at this, like you can improve his latch. He's got the big hands. There's no reason why he can't latch. He's super strong. Hitting moving targets. That's a coachable element. Gets caught leaning and lunging. Okay, that's technique stuff. That's something a good coach can get in there and fix. 
And Georgia probably would have, if not for the fact that he couldn't stay on the field. And obviously that's a concern in and of itself, and it's something that I actually forgot to list. The fact that he couldn't stay on the field in and of itself is a concern. But at the same time, this is just like off the charts potential. This guy, not only does he have easily the potential to be the best right guard tackle, right tackle, excuse me, right tackle in the league. If you could bump him over to left tackle at some point, that's even more value. So I would take him in the middle first. I, I think that uh, the big boards are a little bit underrating him. They're sleeping on him just a little bit. I would put him at the middle of the first round or so. I, I think he is that guy. So if you're keeping track at home, that is three right tackles that I think deserve to go around the middle first. This is a great crop of right tackles. And none of them might end up playing right tackle, but you're getting a good player regardless of where they end up. So don't I'm, I'm, I'm not tripping on that. Okay, one more guy who's a likely first round pick. Obviously, we've stepped down a little bit here going to Tyler Guyton of Oklahoma. But I actually found myself pretty impressed the more I looked at Guyton. <clears throat> Going to be 23 when the season starts. 6'8", so definitely on the taller side. 322, so he could add a little more weight if he needed to. But as of right now, he is a little bit on the leaner side. 34 and an eighth inch arms, which seems short after what we just looked at. But it's not. It's fine. 10 and a quarter inch hands. The testing was mostly good. The speed and acceleration was fine. The vertical jump was out of the building. This guy's got incredible lower body explosiveness. The three cone shows great change of direction ability. The 20-yard uh, shuttle was nice, or at least okay for a guy his size. <clears throat> the big boards, they pretty much all put him at the bottom of the first. CBS has him in the top of the second. The database has him in the uh, bottom of the first as well. I expect him to go somewhere around there. Um, PFF isn't a big fan but last year he did allow zero sacks and only 12 total QB pressures the year before that. He also didn't get a lot of love from PFF, but he only allowed two sacks and two hurries total. So he was productive, he was clean, he was efficient at Oklahoma. Um, when you look at Tyler Guyton and the way that he plays, it's possible that he'll also find some success at left tackle. I think that that's where he would bump before he would bump to a place like left guard. So you might be getting a guy who's good at the most important offensive line position. His movement movement skills are great. He's going to be a great fit for his own blocking scheme. <clears throat> He's going to be a great fit for anybody who wants a tackle that can play in space, hit targets on the move. His frame will allow him to add more weight and strength if he needs to. And I'm not saying he should because his movement skills are what make him really special, I think. But he could if he needed to. His hands, his hands are great, hands always active, hands always uh, playing around with his uh, matchup, trying to uh, trying to land his punches, tr trying to put his hands in the right place to win the rep. He mirrors pass rushers really well with active feet. So um, he's able to stay in front of his guy consistently, just sliding back and forth. He can handle more complex pressure packages. He's got good cerebral understanding. He's got a good savviness to him he understands um how to pick up a blitz he understands twists and stunts so there's a lot of stuff that's good with Guyton and you, you can kind of see what I'm saying right like physically he's not quite there with guys like Latham and um um Mims but as a player he's really not that far off he's he, as a player he's kind of brought a lot of the same things there are a couple issues leverage is a struggle he's not going to win a lot of leverage battles he's too tall and he doesn't sink his hips enough needs to get better he does tend to whiff on blocks in space a little more often than i would like i think that he looks great when he's moving in space he's in control he's peeling up to that next level he's a great pull blocker but sometimes he just misses the target uh the stronger rushers the bull rushers will give him issues because he doesn't have tremendous strength I think that his run blocking in general is going to be a bit of an issue. He needs to hit the weight room. And obviously, if he adds muscle, you're going to lose a little bit of the mobility. But as of right now, I don't think he's going to be everything that you need as a run blocker. So he doesn't have the power of some of the above guys. Even a guy like Fuaga, who doesn't have as much power as you would like, seems a little bit better. Um, 
His refined pass protection, however, is really nice. And it might be better than any of theirs, except for maybe Fulaga. And Guyton probably has more lateral quickness and ability to protect against speed than even Fulaga. So the fact that he might be able to flex over to the left side as well, and the fact that he can add more weight to his frame, he's appealing. And I definitely think he's worth that first round pick. Back end of the first round, sure. The potential isn't there for him to go higher, I don't think. But what is there is more than enough to be worth a first-round pick. Um, I know that some people are going to be a little bit wary of taking a right tackle who has issues in run blocking. But again, there's the potential to bump over to left if he doesn't figure it out. Left tackle is more about pass protection. So you can, you can find ways to make it work, and you're getting a really good player. All right. I'll see you guys later. More right tackle stuff coming later today. Go Hawks. It's a great crop. Pick your favorite. Maybe not for your team. Maybe your team won't get one, but pick your favorite anyway because they're awesome.